Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And we have a lot to go over. If you are an XRP holder, you want to stick around until the end of this video. Regardless, we're going to go over a ton of information in this video, but at the end, we have some hidden information that is kind of giving us an insight onto just how massive the partnership list behind Ripple is and what's going to be happening over the course of the next couple weeks, months, and years ahead. So with that in mind, I hope that you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night if you guys are out there in the world. As we look at this space, guys, not much has uh, changed. I mean, as we really look at this market, you know, Bitcoin has been chopping. Most of the market has been chopping. All coins in the 24-hour span, there is some nice movement across the board, but nothing too, too significant. Um, if we look at the top gainers and losers in the top 500, again, there are some nice gains across the board, but nothing too crazy. What I do like to see, though, is Aleph Zero actually back over a dollar. Love to see that. Um, there has been some nice movement, but again, we're not yet in the alt season time frame where we are starting to see all coins going absolutely parabolic like it's been kind of boring and honestly it's been a chop fest with bitcoin trying to make a big decision around possibly breaking to 74k or possibly even breaking down back to 60k and i've given you guys my overall view on what's going to be happening in this market but if you guys do want 24 7 365 updates about this market discussions about this market you know exclusive insights onto what i'm planning around with this market you guys are more than welcome to join the free Discord. That's right, I said a free Discord down in the description below, as well in the comments below as well, because guys, this is one of the best groups out there for crypto discussions, information, and insights. But with that in mind, let's go over here to XRP. This is what the last month looks like for XRP. I mean, this is not good it's not bad it's just boring let's be honest here it is boring but look at bitcoin in the last month nothing has changed in the last month we're still fighting this like 67 point almost like 5k level this is what the one year looks like again we're just kind of chopping sideways and have been since about roughly march 13th so again this market has been boring let's just be real here and um you know we're just waiting for a big move i mean look at the one year on xrp this is what we have been dealing with for well over a year now so we're just sitting here waiting and waiting and waiting and that could start to shake the tree a little bit and i do question how many people are going to be around once we start to see a big move to the upside which is coming it's going to happen it just takes time but regardless, let's talk about a few things that just happened around Ripple and even XRP. So Ripple recently put out a major markets report. Now, it's not new, right? It's, it got posted on the 17th, um, but I want to highlight a few things within this. So first and foremost, let me open this up in a new tab. We have notable market developments in quarter one include continued U.S. demand for Bitcoin spot ETFs, centralized exchange and DEX volume growth, key regulatory and legal updates, and also technical blockchain upgrades, including the AMM on the XRP ledger, which is one of the biggest things that have happened um, in just the last couple months around the XRP ledger. Now, over here in terms of the full report, right, this is like the full breakdown. There's a lot of information in here. Uh, we're going to go over a few things, right? I, I, I do want to uh, spotlight a few things. Now, XRP drops did give us a little bit more of a zoomed in view on this, but also Ultimately, we can just kind of find that down here. Um, but big shout out to XRP Drops for this regard, this incredible individual uh, to uh, post research around XRP that you need to be following over on X. But regardless, we have the full breakdown. Now, remember, Ripple doesn't have to give us this insight. This is on their half in terms of, you know, being transparent. But we have the overall market summary around crypto, which is the ETF inflows of roughly $12 billion. And uh, this reached $207 billion in just three months, which is crazy. Now, BlackRock saw inflows of $67 billion. Um, we also have a few other ones here down here that they do mention, um, but nothing too, too crazy. I mean, ultimately speaking, as we really look at what's been happening around this space, the ETF volume has been something to focus on, but what about the overall spot volume? So down here we have 
Total centralized exchange uh, volume in March surged to levels not seen since May 2021 high. Spot volumes jumped to 2.93 trillion in March, while derivative volumes jumped to 9.1 trillion per CC data. That's insane to say the least. The centralized exchange weekly volumes also spiked to about roughly $40 billion, a 100% increase over quarter four of 2023. And then also XRP spot volumes, average daily volume surged to about roughly 865 million in quarter one of 2024 representing a 40 percent increase from quarter four 2023 daily average xrp derivatives open interest was about roughly 500 million uh in quarter one versus 460 million in quarter four of 2023 so Nothing too crazy there around XRP. We also have the SEC lawsuit. So on March 22nd, uh, the SEC submitted to the court their request for remedies against Ripple for its historic institutional sales of XRP. The SEC has asked the court for $2 billion, which comprises of uh, a $900 million fee or fine in uh, disgorgement, $200 million in prejudgment interest on the disgorgement request, and also $900 million in penalties. The SEC also asked for an injunction as well. And uh, there's a few updates around that, obviously, that everyone's pretty much aware of at this current moment in time. The big thing to focus on is uh, regulatory approvals and developments. First off, Mika is a big one, right? Um, this is going to start to come into force at the end of June, so next month, which is a big deal. Um, outside of that, there's a lot of regulatory sandbox uh, stablecoin bills coming into play around even the US, even Hong Kong, um, and even the BIS is putting out regulatory recommendations regarding global stablecoin arrangements as well. Now, we also have uh, VASP, right? The Virtual Asset Regulatory Authority in Dubai, big one. They actually uh, gave a license to uh, Deribit. The Monetary Authority of Singapore granted an in-person approval for its payment license to OKX and South Africa's financial regulator announced over 300 crypto asset providers sought approvals for a license in the country. So we're starting to see a lot of uh, big movements happening around licensing, uh, regulatory approvals, frameworks. Um, it is a big move in terms of providing clarity for this space. And we are definitely focused on the movement happening around regulations because it's something that is going to impact this market and a lot of these digital assets like XRP in a very, very large way. So we need to be paying attention to this. Now, as we do go down here, we can see some of the uh, trading volume around XRP and things like that. Ultimately, the big thing that I want to focus on is just on-chain activity. So quarter over quarter, we saw transactions um, on chain increase over 108 percent from 121 million to almost 250, almost 2 million significant, very significant increase. Also, 101 percent in terms of XRP burned. It went from 317,000 to about roughly 636,000. Now, is that going to impact the amount of XRP significantly? No, but over time, it does show you like this will impact XRP in a great way and in a very positive way. And we're talking about volume that's not too, too significant. I mean, listen, this is like over 250, almost 2 million transactions. Imagine if there was billions and billions of, tran uh, of transactions on the XRPL. I mean, how much XRP would be burned at that point? That's why I always say like there could be multiplier effects in terms of XRP's volume um, and value, right? So definitely focus on that because this is something very important when we look at transactions versus the transaction fees and how much XRP is being burned. Outside of that, nothing too crazy. I mean, the average cost per transaction dropped by almost 44%, which is a huge change um average xrp closing price down about five percent nothing too crazy there average cost per transaction again down 45 percent which is a big deal volume on the decks up five percent nothing too crazy there trust lines down about roughly 0.6 percent and number of new wallets down about roughly 11 percent again nothing too crazy there um and then Obviously, they do mention the auto bridging and things like that. Um, there's some great features on the XRPL, and uh, auto bridging is a big one because it taps into XRP on the XRP ledger, and it's pretty much the most. Um, it's basically the most liquid asset on the XRPL, so it would definitely make sense for XRP to be an auto bridged um, asset there. So I think that the auto bridging is a huge deal, especially around the AMM, uh, which we've talked about in the past, especially even around the stablecoin as well. But beyond that, let's talk about something that I really want to address, which is Ripple's partners. Guys, there was a recent post 
that got posted by Ali G XRP. This is very important to know if you are a XRP holder. Let's not forget that Ripple has over 1,700 non-disclosure agreements related to XRP distribution. This is much bigger and deeper than you can imagine. These NDAs will include agreements with central banks, financial institutions, etc. These agreements will essentially construct the new financial system when you put these things together. A lot of these NDAs could very well be partnerships, which we've talked about. Now, could it be other things as well? Like for example, like contracts by which Ripple paid for various counterparty services and XRP provided by Ripple. Yeah, it could be, right? We don't know the full story behind this, but we do know over here from Chris Larson, big shout to XRP drops for this. According to Chris Larson, Ripple distributed XRP to market makers and key banks in some ways. Just what Visa exactly did, they sort they sort of uh, gave out ownership of Visa to key banks to participate in the system as an incentive in the long term success of the network. Reminder from the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit in discovery, the parties produced over 1700 contracts, which are specific agreements by which Ripple transferred XRP to contractual counterparties in a variety of commercial transactions. Check this out. So two things what we've been doing, which we like, is we've been incenting market makers um, with XRP forgivable loans. Um, it's essentially the, the vehicle that we're currently using. Um, but we, we feel that does that incense, uh, say, big currency traders, um, high frequency traders to actually be active market makers on Ripple. Um, that provides liquid markets. That's good for everybody. Gives them an incentive in the long-term success of the network. In, in some ways, just what, exactly what Visa did as they sort of gave out ownership of Visa to key banks to participate in the system. We think that's good. And again, as we do look at a lot of those significant partnerships, like this could very well lead to, you know, 50, 100. We don't know how many NDAs are in place outlining specific partnerships with central banks, institutions, fintechs. You don't know. But one thing that we are aware of is the partnerships that Ripple does have on their website. For an example, under partnerships, you can see all of these ones here. You can see the XRPL infrastructure partnerships. You can see the tokenization partners. Um, and even down here, you have the payout partners as well and the partners in sustainability. Now, these are not like crazy names. These are not like massive names. We've talked about these in the past. Um, but then you also have global customers. Now, again, here you see some great names. But the thing is, is that in the past, we were under the impression that there's like massive banks, right? And we're questioning like, where are those names? Like, where's the list of partnerships that are outlining these big, big banks? I mean, obviously, yes, there's still some banks on here like SAB, SEB, uh, TravelX Bank, SBI. You have major names like even, for an example, Tranglo that are exposing on-demand liquidity to massive banks. You have Ona Freak. Like, these are big names, but we are used to seeing like Bank of America, PNC, these types of names, right? And we're like, well, where are those lists? Even if you go to Amazon uh, Web Services, right? They have a partner profile, which is Ripple. Now, does this mean that they're partnered with Amazon? No. A lot of people try to uh, twist that and say like, oh, they're partnered with, with Amazon. No. But here we have the members of RippleNet, and these are like more than 100 financial institutions. Now, this is not fully updated, by the way, um, but you can see all these big major banks, and we're still sitting here, and we're like, hmm, are they still a member today? Like, are these names still working with Ripple? And we don't really have a way to confirm that or even, you know, say, oh, no, they're not working with them. You can't confirm either scenario. We could speculate all day long, but we can't confirm it fully. Back six years ago, which I've already outlined this in the past, but there was a massive list on Ripple's website regarding their partnership list. Guys, these are all major banks. These are absolute giant financial names. And this was the list that we had back then. Is it the same exact thing today? We don't know. A lot of these we can confirm, though, like Accenture. Uh, we can confirm Volante. We can still confirm Temenos. Like, there's a lot of names on here that we could still confirm today, but not all of them. And it's very hard to do so. We're kind of in the unknown territory of 
who are Ripple, like, who are these names that Ripple is really kind of working with, right? But we also know back in 2020, 38 of the uh, world's largest 100 banks were testing, integrating, or even investing into Ripple's technology. And the list was here as well. You could see these names. This is where, like, you see Bank of America or even, you know, big names like PNC and things like that. Um, that's where you would see them on this list. Now, Bank of America is not on here. I think Bank of America happened a little bit later, um, but these are like major names. There was a recent article that came out and it was uh, back in February, actually. And it's interesting because this is a little bit more of an updated view on who's working with Ripple and XRP. But again, it's still a very, very interesting list because it's kind of just going off of the list over here from like Amazon Web Services. Um, so I, it's hard to say like, oh, can we still confirm that this is the list now? When we already heard from a Ripple employee back in September, actually, uh, saying like we're still working with 500 institutional players and fintechs and like names. So who are those 500 names? I feel like we all want to know, but it's hard to know because is that like the NDAs? Is it 500 NDAs or is it 1700 NDAs? We don't know, but we know that there were 1700 contracts. And this makes your mind start, you know, turning, you're thinking, and you're wondering, like, are they working with this name? Are they working with that name? And there's just so many unknown, you know, questions that we don't have answers to when it comes to who's working with Ripple. We know that they're working with 20 to 30 central banks. We know that they're in discussions with them. We know that Ripple's working with the BIS. We know that Ripple's working with the IMF. We know that Ripple is working with pretty much all those major organizations out there. But who are the partnerships tapped in? We still don't know. But with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did, definitely leave a like, subscribe, turn notifications on if you guys more free content. You guys are more welcome to follow me on Twitter and join the free Discord in the description below. And with that being said, guys, this has been Nick. Thanks for watching. Peace out.